this. All right, it says we're live. All right. Bear with me. We are having another class that has a bar cam, much like the DIY class. We'll see if I can juggle that extra bit of technology today. But yes, welcome to the pandemic fan up happy hour. <laughs> I am your pseudoscientist slash teacher for the day. Um, this is not my coat. I am in no ways a chemist. Um, I do have a certification in food science, but that does not mean I know anything about what I'm doing. I just know that today we are going to experience some very interesting reactions with some very big words. So the vocabulary words for today are anthocyanin, anthocyanin, sorry, anthocyanin, and clitoria ternitae. Those are our two key ingredients today. So what are those ingredients? Anthocyanin is, a, am I saying that correctly? No? <laughs> Algie's looking at me like, I don't think that's how you say it. I practiced those words for the last 30 minutes and I probably still got them wrong on camera because again, not a scientist. Um, but so anthocyanin is a water soluble pigment that is found in many food items that most people have had, such as berries, such as um, certain flowers, certain vegetables like beets. Um, it also happens to be one of the reasons that black rice is black. We use that in a class a while back when I did a bunch of rice-based cocktails. It is a pigment that can present as pink, blue, green, or black, uh, depending on its concentration, depending on what it's in. But it usually, in the right concentration, acts as a pigment indicator, or sorry, a pH indicator for other items. So we are using it today in two ingredients. The first one is cabbage. We are using cabbage in cocktails, and I know that sounds terrible. It isn't, but it sounds terrible. But red cabbage, if it is used and then like the pigment is extracted into a liquid form, um, somebody might remember doing this in chemistry class when you were in like grade school, but you basically can blend it into water, strain out the actual cabbage, you have this purple shade of water, and then depending on what you put in it, whether it has an acidic or an alkaline pH, it will change the color of that liquid. And that can kind of range between bright neon pink to dark green, blue, or yellow. Primarily the ones that are like blue, green, and yellow are all going to be obtained with things we would not want to consume on their own, such as bleach will turn cabbage water uh, yellow. You don't want to consume bleach. I'm gonna make that a very clear PSA. Don't consume bleach, guys. Baking soda being very base or alkaline will turn it a very dark green or blue. However, I don't really feel like drinking baking soda water. So we're not making cocktails with baking soda. Sorry to disappoint, nothing will be turning green today. But we will be using other ingredients that will turn it a different shade of pink and purple. And then our other vocabulary word, I'm sure y'all have already forgotten what it was. I'm just trying to keep tabs in my brain open to remember what they are. But it is Clitoria ternitea. It's just a lot of fun to say once you figure it out. Um, it also can be known as Asian pigeon wings or butterfly pea flower powder. And that is the phenomenon that a lot of people have seen. I wouldn't say lately. I feel like this was kind of big a couple of years ago and it's kind of big again. But it's blue turns everything that it touches blue and then reacts to pHs similar to the cabbage juice and that it turns purple or pink. And there's a lot of cocktails out there. I think the mood ring cocktail was like the first one to hit the general interweb space of color changing cocktails. Um, it is not clitoris, it is clitoria. Uh, now I'm gonna say it wrong because <laughs> I was reading it. Clitora ternitea, I think. Uh, now, see, let's just say, Butterfly pea powder. It's a mouthful. Like, no, there's no way around this. It's just always a ton of words. So we're going to say the blue stuff and the red stuff. Is that okay, guys? We're going to take this grade school. So what I wanted to do was create super basic cocktails. And I don't mean basic in the fact that they're bad. I mean basic in the sense that they are classic. 
all three cocktails we're making today are either actual classic cocktails or very, very light variations on classic cocktails that date back to the early 19th century. So we're talking over 100 years old. These are recipes that don't need to mess with. They're already great. So let's just get into the magic because that's what we're all came for. We came to see really pretty colors. So what I want to explain about uh, our first cocktail is it's gonna be a gin and tonic. It doesn't sound that exciting, but we're gonna make it exciting. So to make it exciting, I have come up with a couple different ways. And I also want to give you a lot of ideas to do this your way. Um, but we're going to be doing the Spanish version of a gin and tonic, also known as a gin and tonica, because it's pretty much the same thing in Spanish, guys. But the difference between gin and tonics as we drink them and gin and tonics as they drink them in Spain, we usually use highball glasses, gin and tonics in Spain, like big round wine glasses. I didn't happen to have any goblets. I have a cute little stemless wine glass, but the bigger, the rounder your glass, the closer you are to being Espanol. They also like to do a ton of garnishes in their gin and tonic. In the US, we usually use maybe a wedge of some kind of citrus fruit. There might be a leaf muddled into it for some particular reason or a spritz of something, but we don't usually over garnish our gin and tonics. Whereas in Spain, they treat them much like they do their sangria. It's got a whole host of things and it can literally be anything you want. So for our gin and tonic, the ratios for Spanish gin and tonic are a little different. In the US, you would use about one and a half to two ounces of gin for about three ounces of tonic water. Whereas in Spain, it is about two ounces of gin and then it's four to five, sometimes even six ounces of tonic water. But they also have access to a lot more variations of tonic water than we do in the United States. So this is a cocktail to build in your glass. I have my little bulbous stemless wine glass. I will switch this to the bar camera here in a minute so we can see the color changing up close. But what we're going to do is, oh, you know what? Let me double check that we're on Facebook. I forgot we're like broadcasting everywhere. But what we're going to do is I have this cabbage infused gin. It's this like light little purple color. So when you're infusing gin or anything with cabbage, there's two different methods that you can use. I think I specified them in the flyer earlier this week, but if they were unclear, I will go over them again. One is to heat your liquid, pour it over your sliced cabbage and let it sit for at least 10 minutes. That should extract most of the pigment. However, if you don't have 10 minutes or maybe you just want it to be a deeper purple, you can take cabbage, blend it, and then strain it. And there's not really like a set amount that you need to blend or steep, really. You're going to get quite a bit of, quite a bit of pigment regardless of what you're doing. So I did this one blended. Um, it's light because I did it yesterday instead of today, but that was my own fault. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour two ounces of my purple gin and hope that it is purple enough. I have a backup just in case this doesn't work. Pour this into my glass, directly into my glass. Put this back over here. So tonic is not super acidic, but it is acidic enough to create a color change. I am going to serve this gin and tonic like basically gin and ice, and then I'm going to have the tonic on the side so that the person drinking it can create the magic themselves. Because it's no fun knowing that your cocktail changed colors before it even got to you. Nobody's going to believe that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try and switch this to the bar cam, see if I can get this all close and stuff. I almost made the bar cam the host. All right, make sure we can see this color. You can see it's purple. I feel like it's not super noticeable. So let's see, maybe this white one underneath. There we go. That's a little bit better, I think. So we have our purple gin. I'm gonna add in some ice. And then for some reason, it's hard to tell with the lighting in here um, as the color changes because this one's gonna probably be a little bit subtle. When I post these on Instagram with the recipe, it will have the photo, but it will also have a video of the color change. So you can rewatch it and maybe get a better close up of what it's supposed to look like. So, root around in my tool pockets. 
I'm using a citrus tonic water that is supposedly specifically used for Patron, which is just a marketing ploy. I just thought the citrus would be nice in the gin. All right, let's see. Um, um, so let's see, I'm not holding up really close. We're gonna see if we can see a color change. I'm gonna put that in there. Let me go from purple to pink. Now, see on the big camera on my computer doesn't look as good. So we're gonna look at it in this camera, and then I'm gonna come back over with the big camera. So now that we have our tonic in there, I'm gonna add in all of our grinding juice. Oh, that looks a lot more pink over there. See? So we are bright pink now, but not doing time about garden cheese and we're scientists and use tools. So I'm gonna add in a bay leaf. I know that sounds weird, but it's cabbage gin. We have vegetal notes. Bay leaf is really nice. We're gonna add that in there. Be super extra. I would like to add, I had a gin and tonic one time when I was in Spain. Um, and they put peppercorns, they put fresh peppercorns all up in my glass. I loved it. Super aromatic. They slowly infused more flavor into the cocktail. But instead of peppercorns, we're going to add some juniper berries. So add, like, I don't know, five of these for no particular reason. Maybe six because I just lost one. There you go. Five. All right. Five juniper berries. And to show you how to be super extra with your citrus today, show me that tool. <laughs> We're going to take a huge swath of orange peel. So if you are unfamiliar, I know this sounds silly, like, oh, I can peel a potato. I have run into at least four people in the last five months that are unfamiliar with how to use a peeler properly. There is no shame in that, unless you are two of those people that live with me, in which case, shame, 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 shame. But this is a pea peeler. Like because it looks like the letter P. There's also the Y peelers. You can use either one. Um, it's just basically what you're comfortable with. But so you do not injure yourself. You'd be surprised how often that happens with a vegetable peeler. You want to try to move the fruit more than the peeler, which takes patience and practice. So the other thing is, is if you want something super big, instead of going down like so, you're going to rotate your fruit. So I'm going to start here, get a little cut, and I'm going to start rotating the fruit. And I'm kind of cutting in a diagonal shape all the way around this orange. You'll see it's super long. I don't know why on earth you would ever need one this long, other than to be super extra with your gin and tonic. So I have this huge piece of orange. I'm going to spritz some of that, pinch some of those oils, and express them onto my gin and tonic. Get out my little dandy tool. Sit that in my glass and bring it over for the class to inspect. That, look how pink that looks now. Is that more visible, visual? Yes, that is a color changing genie tonic. So, only thing to keep in mind about this the cabbage is noticeable. I don't mind it, it might throw some people off. It is a very vegetal flavor. If you've ever been around like sauerkraut or cooking cabbage, we all know it's a very intense, intense aroma. And let me tell you, this gin and tonic, all about that intense aroma. So how can we get past that? Or how can we add to it, complement it? What are different ways we can adjust if we want to use the cabbage? Because maybe we want to do something cool and we don't have the butterfly powder. So you can do something called a glass rinse where you could take a liqueur, or a, a different kind of spirit. I prefer liqueurs because their texture is thicker. And you pour just a small amount in your glass before you get started, swirl it around to coat the inside. Think of it like oiling a brownie before you make browns. And then that's going to add an extra layer of flavor. For this particular cocktail, I like rinsing with yellow chartreuse. It's got herbal notes, it's got notes of honey, and they play really well with the cabbage and the herbs. You could also put something in an atomizer and then spritz it on top, such as orange blossom water or even a liqueur. And that's going to help with the aroma if it is really aggressive. Or just don't make cabbage gin. Make it with the butterfly powder. But the color will be very different. So that is our gin and tonic.
All right. Moving along. My tool's bad. I'm going to keep using these pockets all day. <laughs> I have to return this code at the end of the day, so I'm going to get maximum usage out of my lab coat. So for our next cocktail, we are going to use the butterfly, butterfly pea powder. <laughs> butterfly pea flower powder. Oh, work mouthful. So for this one, we're going to make a daiquiri. And a daiquiri is a very standard cocktail. Um, it's made with rum and lime. It's not a frozen beverage served in enormous glasses with tons of fruity flavors. So those are really terrible renditions of daiquiris, yes. But an actual daiquiri, I have realized a lot of people don't know, is made with just three ingredients, rum, lime juice, and a sweetening agent. Most of the time, it's simple syrup. So we're going to make a classic daiquiri. Um, I wanted to talk to you about your rum selections. When you're working with things that change color, clear spirits do better. They have the ability to shine with more color than if you're trying to make it through a darker colored spirit. When it comes to rum, there are two main rums you can use that would be clear. You have classic silver rum, or you have something called rum agricole, which is usually kind of funky. And it's kind of really hard to explain unless you've ever had it. I am really new to that whole idea. It has a very distinct aroma and flavor, but it is very tasty. It still tastes like rum, just got a little something different, a little sassy. So what we're going to do for this particular daiquiri, if you were not using the blue simple syrup and just the standard simple syrup, you would have a classic daiquiri. But we're gonna make something I call a morpho daiquiri because morpho is also a type of blue butterfly and it is almost the same shade of blue as our syrup, but it's going to change color for more, and I am a sucker for a play on word, so we're calling it morpho daiquiri, but it tastes just like that. Okay, so for this cocktail, you will need a cocktail shaker. If you do not have a cocktail shaker at home, mason jars with screw on lids are your best friend. Second best friend, Tupperware containers and really strong so into our cocktail shaker, I'm going to use two full ounces of rum. Pour that into my shaker. I'm using a funky rum. I had a friend send me a bottle. I've been playing around with it. It's a lot of fun. It's great in a daiquiri. If you've never had a funky rum, I definitely recommend getting one and trying it first in a daiquiri. It's kind of like the best way to explore its flavor. Now we have our two important ingredients. We have the blue, flour syrup, right? The butterfly powder syrup. And then we have our acid. The acid is gonna make it change color. So instead of starting with our color, like we did in the gin and tonic, we are going to take the cocktail and make it change colors. I know that made no sense when I said that. Instead of starting with the actual like pH indicator in our glass, we're going to make it come to life a color, it'll be kind of clear and then it'll morph into color. So we have our clear rum. We're going to take a uh, three quarter ounce of lime juice, freshly squeezed, preferable. Pour that in there. And then I'm gonna get us set up so we can get ready with our bar cam. I'm gonna be using this glass. It's kind of like a coupe. It's a little cute vintage glass that I have. Usually daiquiris are served up, which means no ice into a coupe or a tiny little glass. If you wanna serve it over ice because you like it like that, that's totally fine. I'm not there to tell you don't do it. I'm here to tell you, do what you want. Do something that makes you wanna drink a cocktail. So we have our rum and our lime juice, that's it, in our cocktail shaker. We're gonna ice up. And we're gonna shake for about 10 seconds. All right, I'm gonna switch us over to the bar cam. Let me get that pulled up. And so it's not gonna to seem too exciting at first. We're gonna strain our cocktail into our glass. Remember, it's just rum and lime juice right now. That's all this is. All right, and then this is our beautiful butterfly pea syrup. 
So it's like a navy blue. It kind of also depends on how strong of a concentration you use. I used the powder, not the flowers. They both work. I also used, I think it was a quarter of a teaspoon per quarter cup of water. Um, usually whatever brand you buy is going to give you the instructions on how to dilute it properly. But I made the tea and then I added the sugar to make a simple syrup. So, like I said, we are going to make this change colors. Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer. There we go. So it looks like pale and white. Then we have this beautiful blue syrup. And then I'm gonna take this little stir stick and slowly stir in my syrup. And it takes on a color similar to an aviation cocktail. It's just this really pretty purple. I don't know, this camera on the phone isn't as pretty. So let's go over to the other one. I'll come over and see you guys. So let's see if we have any, I think I have blue here. Yeah, look how pretty and purple. It's like a violet color. So this one doesn't have as much of a neon quality as the cabbage does. It's less vibrant, but it is still equally pretty. So in my experimentation, I have realized that the butterfly powder has a softer tone to it. Almost, I wouldn't say pastels, but it's definitely softer. Whereas the cabbage, no matter what I put in there, it was like turning a neon light and on in my glass. It was really cool, but it doesn't look natural. So if you serve it already changing color, already having changed color, somebody might ask you what's in that cocktail because it looks radioactive, which could be great for Halloween. But maybe not so great if you're just, I don't know, at a jazz club on a Friday. So we have our Morpho daiquiri. And again, you could just shake all of this and have a beautifully purple daiquiri. This is just so y'all can see the change of color. You could also shake the rum and the syrup and then add the lime juice. But some rums have a certain acidity to them. So it won't be the perfect blue that the syrup is on its own. So keep that in mind. And then... For our last cocktail, I wanted to think of a fun way to use all of our ingredients together and have slower reaction times. So what I did was I made a bunch of ice. I took butterfly, pea, flour, powder, tea, and made it into ice cubes. And then I took cabbage water and made it into ice cubes. And what we're gonna do is a Tom Collins riff with vodka, also known as Vodka Collins. Uh, I just chose vodka because we already made a gin drink today. I'm doing a slight variation, sweetening it with agave because I've just kind of been on an agave kick lately, but you could use simple syrup. So for those of you at home who have never made a Tom Collins or a Vodka Collins, the way you make them are, your recipe is gonna be two ounces of, for a traditional one, it would be two ounces of gin. It would be one ounce of lemon juice and a half ounce of simple syrup. So the exact same build we're doing now and then once you have that, it would be topped off with like club soda or sparkling mineral water of your choice. We're going to do just a tiny bit of variation. So in my cocktail shaker, I'm going to add two ounces of vodka. And one of the reasons I wanted to add vodka was also so some of the flavors of the ice as it melts can slowly shine through in the cocktail without having to compete with all of the botanicals that you would find in something like a gin. So two ounces of vodka. We're gonna do one ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. We're gonna do a half ounce of agave syrup. And they do make light and dark agaves. I usually prefer to go for light agave. The flavor is a lot nicer in my opinion but use whatever you like. Like I said, you can also use a simple syrup. You can make a honey simple syrup if you would like. So once you have that in there, before we shake our cocktail, I'm going to prepare our glass. So I have this really tall Collins glass, which I know you can't see behind my camera, but I'm gonna see in a minute. And I have this, all this really awesome ice. So I'm gonna get out my little things. Actually, I don't think it was big enough. We're gonna glove up. I will say this. If you work with these and make multiples of these a day, just wear gloves so you don't end up with these crazy colored fingers because I spent two days with like tie-dye hands. <laughs> but I have blue ice, 
we should have put them next to each other. That way you guys can see the colors. So this is cabbage ice. It's purple. This is the butterfly ice. That's blue. They're similar in shade, but they're not. They're different. Blue and purple. So I'm going to alternate these in my glass, or at least try to. So I have ice in my glass. Very simple cocktail. I'm gonna put ice in my shaker, just regular ice. I give it a quick shake, about 10 to 15 seconds. All right, now if you've never made a cocktail that has a carbonated ingredient that you shake, do not shake anything carbonated. Your shaker will explode. Don't ever put any ginger beer, club soda, Tobo Chico, whatever your sparkler of choice is, don't put it in your shaker while you're shaking. You put it in after. So we have our Collins shaken up, also known, this cocktail has also been called Tom's True Colors. Rip on Tom Collins, showing his true colors with this ice. I'm gonna put about three to four ounces of soda. And then we're going to switch to the bar can for some magic. All right. So, yeah, this camera is terrible, guys. I'm so sorry. All the ice looks the same color, but I swear it's like blue, purple, blue, purple. Okay. So, we are going to strain our Collins over our cocktail. And it just magically turns all these colors. And if you need to, you can always top it off with a little extra club soda. And then let's get it back on the regular cam and show you what it looks like. So now you have three contrasts of color. You have blue, purple, and pink. Now I will say, rather than doing this, I did this because it was kind of easier to see all the colors, but you can make the colored ice and then put it in like a bag and crush it with a rolling pin, a mallet, whatever you have at home. And then you can put all your ice on the bottom, pour the cocktail over it, and then put your soda on last and you'll end up with like an ombre type of effect. It's really neat too. It's just kind of personal preference, whatever you like to do. Hey, look how pretty that is. And it's just the Vodka Collins, but you would never know that. This is like a Vodka Collins from another galaxy. Yeah, just tastes. Nice and citrusy and refreshing, but it looks magical. So I know these cocktails were not hyper exciting today, guys, but that wasn't our purpose today. Sometimes we do things that are a little off the rails. Oh, there's a total cat taking all the screen time. I love it. Hello, cat. Thank you for joining our class. <laughs> but just so you guys know, because I know we have some new viewers tuning in, we usually do cocktails that are a little bit more involved, but still easy to make. I like it for, I like to create opportunities for people to experiment at home, to be able to try and recreate the things you're missing if you're staying at home through the pandemic. Um, all of the classes are available for rewatch on the Facebook page, on the YouTube channel. I'm slowly being able to upload them. I think the first dozen classes are up. I always post these later in our private group, the Pandemic Pinup Happy Hour. We share notes. There's extra documentation and information also in there. Sometimes there's polls, so you guys can give me feedback about what you want to see in class. Um, but today's class, I just kind of wanted to show you how sometimes you don't have to go crazy. You can just do something simple. Maybe you have leftover stuff in your fridge, like cabbage. I don't know if people just have leftover cabbage, but I do because cabbage goes a really long way. So sometimes you can do something cool and just kind of treat yourself to something pretty. It doesn't have to be all crazy, just pretty. But um, in other news, next week I will be on the road, but classes will continue as normal. It will just be pre-recorded. So if there are any questions, I will get to them after the class goes, um, I wouldn't say live, but after it's available for viewing. It'll be available at the same time, 3 p.m. Sunday on the Facebook page. And it will be cocktails inspired by fast food joints because I'm on the road and I wish the places that I was stopping had cocktails. So we will be having a Baja Blast margarita. 
We will be having a not safe for children Sonic Cherry Limeade and my rendition of a root beer float, which is as Texan as it can possibly be. Trust me, there is no way to make that float more Texan. But I hope you tune in for that class. And like I said, I will definitely get back to anybody with any questions y'all might have. And then the whole month of October comes and we get spooky. It's gonna be so cool. All of the cocktails for October have me super pumped. All kinds of themes between witches and ghosts and vampires. We're even gonna do um, Dia de los Muertos class. We're gonna learn a whole bunch about Mexican culture. And if y'all are good and behave and make cocktails, then I'll teach you how to do a proper mariachi grito. Should be fun. Let's get drunk and scream around like mariachis and get festive. I'm so excited. So thank you for tuning in if you're on Facebook. Reach out to me if you have any questions or anything you want to see me work with or help make you make for you. Um, I think my science brain is finally in full meltdown. The, the code is making it feel smarter than it is. It's not working. But thank you for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the live. If this was your first time checking us out on Facebook, you are always welcome to join us in the Zoom room. I post the links every week with the poster of all of the preparations you can make in advance with the instructions on how to make things like the cabbage gin or the ice. Um, so yeah, just feel free to reach out to me and let me know what's going on behind your bar. Until next time, Facebook viewers, it's been real. I wish I knew like a Bell Nye sign off phrase. I don't. I'm gonna just do what Miss Frizzle says, make mistakes, get messy, and then add round twist and get drunk because that's more fun. <laughs> all right, bye.